Good evening team, this is the Brown Man, and today we are going to go over Annie Nobi, her four unique perks, and some ways that I like to build her. So jumping right into it, hit them where it hurts is her active ability. You press it, and the range damage is buffed by 30% for 15 seconds for anyone in your aura. The cooldown is 45 seconds. Howitzer. Range damage is up by 25% for anyone within the aura. Haymaker. You do more damage to the balance bar or basic units by 25%. I have Slugger. It boosted the balance bar damage you and your teammates do to elite units and boss units for everyone in the aura. She's a leader, so pretty much everything is aura based. 25% for elites, 100% for bosses. So as you see, Annie Nobi specializes in increasing range damage and increasing balance bar damage. Um, to me, she is the best leader in the game because she actually gets around possessed units to a certain degree and helps defend the book. By increasing balance bar damage, they are stunned and they and in this patch, they actually increased the cost, at least the early cost, for possessions. So when units are stunned, they're still taking that up to keep cost, the demon. So if it's 60 infernal energy per second, it's still gonna be 60 infernal energy per second, even if they're stunned. So it burns through their resources a little bit. And it also counts as damage mitigation because if they're stunned and not moving, they can't damage your team. So that's damage your team is not taking. Also, that means it's less champs and less resources for your team to use and allows y'all to be fully stalked pretty much by the end game if you play your cards right. Range damage is a great damaging type because it is um, from outside of the melee range of units. Uh, but it's also if you're really good with headshots, some people are, some people aren't, headshots double the balance bar damage that you deal to units. So if you do something like uh, you have Annie Nobi, for example, who does 100% balance bar damage to boss units. So when the boss doesn't have the fifth upgrade, the fifth upgrade makes it so they don't get stunned um, when the balance bar is full. But if they don't have that, if someone gets a headshot on the boss unit, that's 300% value on the balance bar to the boss. So let's say you have a 50 damage or 50 balance bar. Um, damaging gun, you shoot them in the head, that will do 150 balance bar damage instead of 50 per headshot. So it gets cry, uh, quite nutty, if you will. Um, one of the builds that I have been experimenting with her is this one. Uh, she doesn't really have the greatest aura range with this build, clearly because there's only one in there. But she has some sustainability, she has industrial strength through here, tougher than hell, just to reduce the damage. This, these are mandatory perks, of course, you gotta fast forward to help push the objective a lot faster. Some demons have abilities that actually extends the duration of objective events. So by mitigating that, it lets your team use less resources, once again. And I'm all about using less resources and doing the maximum amount of damage I can to the demon. Because she uses guns a lot, I go too into deep pockets am ammo. This allows you to, for example, for a long gun, instead of carrying 30 ammo, allows you to carry 45. And it's also a big help to the hunter because you can carry the hunter's gun type 15 extra, and that would help the hunter just not run out of bullets throughout the game. Especially if they're not really good at headshots, they're going to be bleeding ammo up the ass, most likely. And I run four in hollow points for extra damage, one in stopping power for the balance bar. And I threw one here for extra balance bar as well, since that's what it tends to be used for. Um, one way that people can switch this up, that's build A. You can actually take out of that if you want. You can go fully into aura range, so that way if the hunter is evading, you don't have to necessarily hug the hunter. The hunter has quite the wiggle room 
to dodge on their own and still be buffed by your skill. And you can also, for example, do two into cardio. If you're good at doing headshots, you're getting the balance bar buff anyway. You can also, once again, you know, just seeing stars here, I'll leave that here because just for, just for safety, you might not always have bullets and you might need, still need to do some balance bar damage. Cardio helps you escape from possessed units a little bit easier. Along with the Artful Dodger, you get you can dodge a little bit easier, you can run, you can bolt. Especially now with the update that demons can bolt after you. You can actually still loop them. I have some videos on looping demons even though they can still bolt. But definitely reducing the cost of sprinting helps a lot. So this is just one way you can do it. You can go objective based with Arcane. I, I personally don't like to leave this area, but for example, if you don't want to go into self-preservation and you want to go pretty much fully into team support, you can actually take out of a lot of this, go fully into melee balance bar, because melee balance bar, it takes three, but it scales up to 25% as opposed to the 15% scaling here, right? We can go into... Echoes. So that way when they leave your aura, they can still maintain it for another 7 seconds. So it allows them to kind of teeter it on the edge of going back and forth with the aura. And you can also go, you can go deep pockets, you can go stopping power. Stopping power seems pretty good just because of the balance bar. Buff is always good. It's just worth it better than one of these. Um, you, can do, you can do it that way. If you want to be an objective pusher, you don't want to worry about balance bar, that's actually fine. You can go all four into arcane knowledge. If you're an aggressive leader, you can actually pump these out very quickly with arcane knowledge. You'll pump out the three map pieces, and then immediately you'll go to the objective. If, uh, if one of your teammates is a support, they carry more shimps and amulets, so they can actually carry maybe a shimp or something for you. Um, in lieu of you looting for yourself, that's a route you can take. Um, one of the other routes that some people take, I'm not really a fan of it. But they go into sometimes cooldown and they'll go into Master of Influence. Master of Influence is a rather interesting perk. We're going to have to take one out and put that in there like that. So it increases the value of your aura by 20%. It doesn't add a flat 20% to your aura. So for example, if we have Slugger, um, well, it just happens to be 20. Um, so let's do it like this, right? So yeah, we have Slugger, right? So it adds 20% value. So it's not going to be 45% to elites. It's going to be, oh my god, oh my god, this 30%. Right, yes, 20 divided by, by yeah, 100 divided by 5, yeah, okay, got it. It's going to be 30%, so it's only going to add 5% or 20% of the 25. So it adds 20% of whatever the aura effects number is, right? So, but it will add a flat 20% because percent means out of 100, and 20% of 100 is 100, so it's going to add 100, so you're going to do 120% balance bar damage boss units if you have this fully spec'd out at 20 percent uh but typically the values for a lot of these perks aren't that high but once again if you, any little bit helps if you want to go it stacks a little bit with these because you go 20 percent 20 percent you get some extra damage but typically the 10 percent damage buff about just isn't worth it to me. So I personally don't choose this, but for several other people, it might be worth it to run something like this. Um, one of my preferred builds is actually we go. That's something that's also really good um, because you can play as a pseudo hunter. You don't get feared as easily, and you don't have the um, the internal 
gun buff that hunters have, so you rely a lot on your aura. So if you have a gun and you get possessed, you're not going to be this, this super awesome killing machine unless maybe they're good at headshots and you have like a legendary gun. But typically, that's not going to happen to you also because of your great fear resistance as a leader. So you can also, once again, take one out, put one into deep pockets ammo if you're going to go the hunter route. Or if you don't want to do that, you can actually take one out of industrial strength if you don't want the 5%. Then go into ammo if you want to maintain the 10%. That's one way you can do, go about it. Or once again, you can actually shorten your range and just put one more in there. Or what you can do is actually, if you don't want... Oops, if you, don't, if you just want pure damage and small aura, then you can just go full range spec out here. And then you have the maximum um, melee bound bar buff. So if you just want to go aggro, especially if you're really good with headshots, you get the little big splinter bonus. It gets really nutty um, with how it's are stacking with hit him where it hurts. These are some builds that are uh, pretty good DPS. Um, I, don't know, I really do like these builds, but I I have a specific need in all of my characters to be able to handle the demon solo. So I always pretty much run self-preservation on all of my characters. So it's gonna be something. It's gonna be something more akin to that. Like I always have to have this spec out, just because. You never know, like you never know if the demon's gonna be on you, or if you're the last one standing at the objective area, you're gonna need this survivability, right? They have they place a flute up, or they ha use really bad influence, or everyone's down and it just happens to be an Alagos staring you down. You're gonna need the extra health. You're gonna need the extra tougher than hell, because I I typically don't like being a fragile character, um, and plenty of times, especially if you're running once again fast forward. And you're the last one standing. The, all these three perks specifically. Um, industrial strength, tougher than hell, and fast forward is actually going to help you do the holdout by yourself. If you if you need to. And then the rest you can put into balance bar if you want. There's so many ways you can build Annie. You can pretty much not build her wrong at all. You can build damage if you if you find a sledgehammer. Along with seeing stars, things will be stunned all the time. And once again, all that is damage mitigation plus free damage because you get free hits when they're stunned. So it's free damage as well. So sometimes you don't have to spec into damage, especially melee damage, because if you're getting an extra hit or two because of the balance bar, that counts as a buff, right? Because it's, it beats a 30% buff or something that Arthur gives because you get two or three additional hits per member of the team, so it compensates for not buffing the melee damage, because they get free hits anyway. Right. Um, that is something that I like about Annie. One of the things that is very interesting with Annie is just how quick range stacks on her, right? So for example, if you go max into range damage, and then the boss comes up, or a possessed elite, especially at the book, at the book it, it really counts those two minutes are um, just as important as the rest of the game because you can lose the game in those two minutes or the demon can win the game in those two minutes you can use all of your resources throughout the game throughout 30 plus minutes of the game and then just lose the two minutes so typically headshots really matter at the book especially when the boss cannot be stunned so if you run damage Annie with a revolver or something like that then Annie puts in the work. Right. Um, bosses take, they don't take two times the damage from a headshot. They take two times bounce, but I'm not two times the damage. It's not quite there. It's uh, between 1.5 and 1.75 damage. So you go into hit him where it hurts. You add the extra 30%. Now that's times two plus the wig splitter plus the hollow points and you can pretty much melt bosses on the book. Like one of the common strategies is to just dump Evil Ash or dump Henrietta on the book. And being able to go for headshots with Annie 
is one of the end game securing moves that you can, and then with your balance bar buff, you'll just beat um, elites to death, and they they will not do much damage to the book, or at least you'll mitigate damage to the book because they get stunned a lot, and you get some free hits in on them. So that's a very quick, very brief rundown of Annie, some of the ways to use her, and really these are the reasons why I really love her, because she is such a versatile character. One of my favorite weapons to use on her is the Meat Hammer, because that allows you to do a hit and then dodge out the way. The Sledgehammer does great, it crushes Balance Bar, but sometimes you might be treating hits or just not fast enough. Um, to do the dance, to do the dance of hit, bounce bar, move, or execution into a dodge, right? So, the meat hammer and the sledge are definitely weapons that I would personally use on her. For guns, I would use the revolver, um, or a shotgun. For sure, the blunderbuss, because they buff the reload, it actually, actually reloads, reloads much faster. I'm not sure if that's a bug, but it does reload much faster. So... You can get headshots with that, and it once again is stacked with all your perks. Because it's a big ass fucking log, it's a really big hitbox, and it's really hard to miss the headshots with the blunderbuss compared to any other gun. Besides maybe the shotgun, because of the multiple shots that they have. That's the video for today. I hope y'all enjoy using Annie. I really love using Annie. Stay safe and have a good one.